On this episode, our old enemy comes back to haunt us. Ooh, there is a problem with the comma. We admit to a weakness. How do you... <sighs> Math is difficult. But there is some progress after all. We got a couple of seconds of gameplay. We <laughs> progress, baby. <sighs> Hi, everybody. This is Christian from Lazy Diffs Academy. Welcome episode 78 of the advanced schmuck tutorial ah yes um we are currently working our way through a list of upgrades of features that we realized were missing in our uh, big test a big workflow test in order to get to the point where we can figure out the gameplay and actually make the actual game <laughs> all right um i've been looking a little bit at things and I realized um, so something we want to do today is definitely the uh, sh shadow stuff but there's two little fixes that I've missed that I want to talk about they are really small but maybe worthwhile doing so um, here in gameplay when we're doing the do enemies right we said like this was this little code that basically if we went over 360 degrees it would it would remove one circle, right? Because so it, the enemies don't spin around. In this code, um, we only do it once, but we might have multiple spin ups, right? So uh, I think a, a while, um, we would have to do a while loop here, not an if. Uh, let me see. Um, so we have, uh, we are, uh, let me see if this even costs, I, I'm wondering if this even costs tokens. So we're gonna go while abs do, and no, it just costs nothing. Is, 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 does that even work? Is, is that even is that viable? Yeah. That's interesting. That's interesting. So yeah, this allows us to repeat. Like basically, we replace the if with a while. So um, it, this doesn't just happen once, but it keeps happening until until um, yeah, we've unwound, so to speak, the rotation. All right, and the other little tweak is over in an edit. I noticed here that I have two columns called call, and <laughs> maybe maybe that's not a good idea. So the first call is collision, and the second one is uh, CFL. Let's go CFL, it's collision flag. It's, I, it's not ideal, it's far from ideal. <laughs> But I want to go here because uh, this is where we start with our next task. So last time around, we drawn some shadows on the ground and we drawn them like it looked really nice. So we maybe want to repeat this. We maybe want to make it actually part of the actual game, not just like this little prototype. The way we did this was get a little bit hacked in and I want to have a little bit more control of the size of the shadow and over the height of the, of the, of the character of the ship, right? Um, so uh, we are right at the right spot for this because that's something I want to do on a per uh, enemy basis. I want to, each enemy to have like a size of the shadow and like a height of the of the shadow. So let's just introduce two more parameters and you can see that now we're getting a lot of parameters in here. So it's good that we are no longer have to fight that many enemies. Right, so let me uh, go shadow size, SHS. And then S H H, <laughs> and then uh, we're gonna add a third parameter, and that is gonna be S F X. I don't know, maybe let's go just F X, like an F X parameter, um, because I was talking. I would just want to have like a like a place to put an idea for this enemy moves a little bit differently. Um, because I had like this idea that maybe for the, especially for the bigger enemies, for like boss enemies, maybe they're like hovering a little bit, you know? So there's a bit of a, so they look more dynamic a little bit. I think for the small enemies, because they're moving so fast anyway, that, that makes no sense that they're hovering. But for enemies that are stationary, that are just like there in, in space, I think if they're moving a little bit up and down, that would be kind of nice. So I want to have just like an, just a little entry there that, that covers that. Right, and I think like in this regard, this should be basically it, right? Right, so let us just fill this with, with uh, values that we know are useful. Um, so in shadow size, um, I think we had three. And here shadow height, I think it was 16. I'm not sure if this is true. 
Uh, but we're gonna just fill it with those standard values and we're gonna see what happens. Now, the problem, the reason why I want to define the shadows here as well is because we have the enemy preview here and I would love to see like the shadow underneath as a preview. Um, but we're gonna uh, implement that later back in. So let me just fill it this up with values. All right, so this is this is all the values that I've inputted uh, in the final, in the, in the big chunker enemy, I put uh, the shadow size five in there. All right, let's export this. Uh, and then let's go back to Kaushmap and let me, let's, let's make sure that this, these values are saved in enemies. And then let's make the, uh, the, the shadow drawing be dependent on those values. All right, so this is spawn n. So we're gonna get um, sh shad, shads, <laughs> shadow size, shads. <laughs> Uh, equals, um, mm, we forgot um, what the number is. And then we're gonna go shed, uh, shed height equals also something. We also forgot about this. Uh, and then gonna go fx equals also some, some value. I'm just gonna retain that value already, but we're not doing anything with that one uh, in specific yet. So this should be shads should be eight, nine, and, and this should be 10. Let me look this up. Uh, no, H is bullet cancelling. Interesting. Where am I using this? Nowhere. Huh, interesting. Okay, so let's let's um, can cans. <laughs> We're gonna um, put this in in the, the kank uh, ability. We're gonna put um, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Let me write this down. Okay, so now we're dumping all those values into parameters in, in the enemy. Now the question is, how are we going to draw the, end, the, the the shadow based on that, huh? So it's basically here, right? Um, where where does the door? Where, where are we drawing stuff? Draw a game, indeed. Oh, there we go. My oval. Oh, this is for player sprite, and this is for all enemies. Okay. And we're checking if the enemies are on layer two, but actually I have maybe a better idea. If E shads is greater than zero, um, that way we can maybe, there's gonna be some ground enemies that, ha that do throw a sh shadow. I can imagine maybe like an enemy uh, being on the ground and then taking off, right? Uh, and in this case, maybe, let's just keep it around. I think that's, that's more clear. So if shads is greater than zero, then my oval, this is gonna be shads. This is gonna be shad h. Uh, and this is gonna be shads. Well, hmm. Um, let's go shads minus one for now. And then we're gonna see uh, how that works out. Uh, so that was the height of the oval. Um, but I'm also already thinking maybe doing this a little bit differently. Um, maybe the, I'm gonna have a draw shadow function instead of my oval. Uh, let's let's just run this for now. Ooh, there's a problem with the comma. A comma missing. Oh yes. Oh look, now the ground enemies are throwing shadows. Hmm. I want to see the bigger uh, shadow from the from the big enemies. Oh yes, awesome! Yes, this is this was excellent. Uh, it was a bit loud in my earphones. Let's make it um, draw shad like this, and then here we, we bit later we, when we need more flexibility, we can add more flexibility later in. But for now, we're just gonna draw a shad, and that's gonna be it. And then, um, and then we're gonna get this stuff out, and we're gonna go go to my oval, and we're gonna change my oval, and draw shad. And this is gonna be just per or obj object, obs, <laughs> almost. Um, Right, and then we can go over fill, um, and then we can can type all this stuff in. So it's going to be obj.x here, obj.y uh, plus obj.shadh, and then 
and then we're gonna go local uh, O W and O H. Uh, we're gonna do this. Uh, obj dot shed w obj dot shed shed w hmm uh, divided <laughs> let's do this how do you <sighs> math is difficult got it so we're gonna go obj dot shed w <laughs> math um, divided by uh, but it's like the integer divided by uh, one point five. Uh, and that should be it. Shed v. There is no shed. Oh yeah, because um, our um, our player sprite doesn't have shed. Shed v and shed h. Shed v uh, is gonna be three, and shed h uh, is gonna be. I, I, I set it to sixteen, but maybe maybe we should. Need, uh, oh, x doesn't exist. Uh, Hmm, maybe you should dump everything in OX and OY. Yeah, just, let, let's just dump all of this information into those parameters. Oops. Uh, uh, uh. This obj dot y plus um, shed hu. All right, so this is a bit complicated, but uh, I mean, a little bit difficult to read because it's everything in, in one line, but I'm basically dumping all the information from the object into like helper variables. Um, so it's a little bit easier to write this. And so we don't have to repeat that object too often. Uh, all right, so let's see. Uh, OC, uh, we can set it to one. We got a couple of seconds of gameplay. We <laughs> progress, baby. Is it sheds? Uh, I think it's sheds. It's not shed. Uh, yeah. Okay. I I don't quite like uh, the positioning of the shadow underneath my the player ship. I think this looks better because I don't. I want the the jets to be kind of like separated from the. So it's, he looks a little bit higher than the rest, but that's okay. Oh, I, I saw the shadow. I haven't pay, paying attention to the big shadow. I already see some pop in on some, on some of the shadows. That's or something I want to avoid. That's why you probably need the shadows in the um, schedule editor as well. Oh, this looks good. This looks like a good chunky shadow. Oh, yeah. Oh, they look so menacing now because you can feel like they're really connected to the landscape because you see the shadow. <laughs> this is fun. I should have introduced the shadow so much earlier. It was a mistake to, to wait so long. Let me get this shadow drawing function and let me get this into... Um, I want to see this in the enemy editor. I want to see this in um, the schedule editor and I probably want to see this in a brain editor. Just like to... because the brain editor... You, you see the movement of the enemies. It kind of makes sense, I think, to, to put, have it in a brain editor as well. Uh, right, so let me put these things in the enemy editor first. All right, so this is now implemented in um, an edit, and yeah, that looks good. Um, I see a preview shadow, and I can uh, see, and I can modify the size, the positioning, and so forth. I see always, you know, how big this is too small. I can be like, okay, let's make it five, let's make it six, you know, that makes sense. Hmm, maybe six is good, actually, but if it's so big, I probably want it to be a bit closer. Yeah, maybe something like this, ooh, haha. <laughs> All right, this is an edit. Let us also put this into Skedit. Easy, easy peasy for breezy. All right, so we have now the shadows in um, 
in here. And the reason I wanted to have it in here, I already talked about this. Um, for example, if I have a spawn, if I have an enemy spawning like here, uh, where, is, where is that enemy spawning? It would be nice if there was a way to figure out where an enemy is spawning. But okay, uh, let us just go here, right? You, you see how the shadows appear suddenly? Uh, on the, some of those enemies, so we, you might be like, okay, maybe this enemy is a little bit, you know, too... Uh, oops, that's not the right one. Uh, that's why we have the undo now. Uh, yeah, that, that un undid it. Um, so, for example, this enemy, right? We could move this out of the way so the shadow actually doesn't spawn in, in, in space, but it actually moves into the screen. Um, yeah, helps up a little bit with the positioning of the enemies, although in this case that wasn't so hardcore. I mean, and the shadows are moving so fast, you wouldn't see any pop. And in other situations, this might be important. And I want to see the big shadows. Yeah, the big shadows work. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Excellent. And also now I want to bring this into Brain Edit. Uh, it's not necessarily important for Brain Edit right now, but maybe later on there's going to be some behavior stuff that interacts with the shadows. So I want to set up this already right now. Yep. And that's working as well. Nice. Uh, yeah, so let me see. Do we have enemy behavior that is... Ah, oh, this looks so, so much better already. And I can already tell the next thing I want to fix. Hmm. Oh. It's, it's somehow the shadow adds just so much. It makes it so much so tangible. I love it. Hmm. They really pop off the screen right now. This is so good. <laughs> I can't stop fawning about how awesome this looks. <laughs> All right, there's one last thing I wanted to fix right now. It's kind of like an important thing, and it's one of those, why didn't I do this earlier? And this is actually a good place to, to look at that, that thing that I wanted to fix. So you see how, look at this. It's kind of weird, right? Because it seems like the, uh, the it's, a, it's a snake of enemies, right? But it seems like the enemies that are behind uh, they're on top of the enemies that are in front. So it's, it seems like it's like going upwards because it's, it's, it's stacked upwards, right? Um, they're overlapping each other in the wrong order. If this was just a train of enemies following each other, then the, the, the locomotive, the, <laughs> the enemy in the front, right? That should be drawn the last. And the enemy in the way, way in the back should be uh, drawn last, uh, first. So first the, the enemy in the back and then on top the enemy further in the front and on top an enemy in the, in the, further in the front. Um, this is caused by the fact that, I mean, maybe this is a little bit different here because we're using like this weird spawning thing, but this is true for all of the enemies in this game. And this is caused by the fact that when a new enemy spawns, we just add it to the end of the list. So that is going to be newest enemies are being drawn last. I want the opposite. I want newest enemies to be drawn first. Because usually the enemies that spawn, spawn higher up in the screen. So they should be further behind. So they should be covered by older enemies. Um, yeah, so I just want to just change a little bit of drawing order. I'm not sure if I can do this here. Let me see. I think when I do a spawn N, yeah, we're adding to the enemies and then we're adding this enemy. Uh, a simple solution here is just to go comma one and that will spawn new enemies in the back. Now this won't quite work, I think. See, it doesn't work here because here we're spawning the enemy different. We're doing like a copy, so that doesn't quite work. Um, but let me see. Right, we can do this with, with the clones as well. And now you see, now this looks correctly. This is the way I, I want it to have. I want, it, now the perspective is correct now, right? The only problem is like this now looks wrong, but I don't mind that too much. I think it's gonna be gonna have rare situations where enemies are coming like in these kind of trains from back. And that doesn't even look that bad. Um, it looked more wrong. This, this used to look more wrong. So now that this is in brain edit, I also want to bring this back into the game. I probably won't need that in a sketch edit, uh, in a schedule editor. That's not that necessary. I think the schedule editor is just like an aesthetic thing, and I think it's worth adding. All right, so here in spawn, and it's just like a comma one. So this is this add function, right? When you do add, uh, so there's an array, and then there is an object that you put in the array, and that's it. And that's how we we did it before. But you can also specify an index at which the enemy is being, or the object is being inserted into an array, and the rest shifts further down. Uh, so yeah. 
Right, let's try that. So we're adding this here. And we also want to do the copy list thing here. Yeah, we want to do this as well here. And those are two places where enemies are adding, uh, being added to the screen. You already saw that actually happening because you saw that, I'm gonna actually know that that was the, the, um, the ground enemy. Oh yeah, but this is good. All right, I didn't have the snakes here, so let me let me start at, at the position where the snakes appear. Let's go. Let's comment this out and go scroll equals zero. Ah, oh. oh, there's a snake. See, the snake looks correct. And also, these enemies are overlapping a little bit, and they also look correct now. Oh, this is so nice. Okay, I see one more problem. You see how the ground enemies have a shadow. I want to remove that, but we're gonna do that in the enemy editor now that we have the capabilities, right? Oh, this is so nice. I can immediately see which enemies are affected. So it's gonna be this one, right? Let's set it uh, shadow to zero. I probably should make it so, oh, that's not correct. I should, probably should make it so that um, Shadow Zero won't show up here. So let me, let me fix that real quick and just set this also to zero. That makes sense to me. Okay, let's let's try this now. Okay, so now when I set the size to zero, it should disappear. Um, so now we have it at 16, but still it does, does not appear. Good, that's what we wanted, baby. So let's save this and let's load Couch Map. Oh wait, ah, I didn't I didn't export this. I, uh, ooh. <laughs> Saved by the autosave. <laughs> Alright, lo load couch map. Yeah, and now the ground enemies don't have any shadow. Cool. Works. All right, so this covers up the shadow stuff and we did some little details. And next up I want to do is, I want to get into the, some bullet stuff. I want to do bullet canceling, which will involve maybe some uh, particle effects. And then I also want to tackle finally this question of bullet origin. And maybe we're gonna discuss bullet uh, targeting, like retargeting. And also once we have bullet canceling, it would be also good to have um, sealing. Yeah, we're gonna have everything, it's gonna be great. For now, let us move on to the last part of each episode where I say a big thank you and a huge shout out to all of the people who are supporting this show on coffee.com. Thank you so much for your support. On this episode, because it's a new month now, I'm gonna read out some new uh, subscribers, some new supporters that joined us on coffee in the last two months or so. So as of February 13th, Warm welcome to Scarman, 8scape, New Cassette, Purona, TF, Row Edit, Rocky Boulder, Rob Derson, Paradise X, 12 Gauge, Zilber Carter, Yeheel, QS, Amok, Thomas, and Aski Slinger. Welcome and thank you so much for the support once again. And I also want to do a shout out, not a question, but a shout out or a feature. So Eric B, which I already talked about on this show, uh, released his beautiful uh, shmup called Praxis Fighter X. It's finally finished and it looks incredible. It's already out on Lexalofa and Itch and Newgrounds and everywhere. It's, it's really cool. Something that really blew me away. I mean, it's, it's just such a long shmup. It's so crazy. It just keeps going. You think that's his final boss, but nah, it's some kind of mid boss. It just keeps going. Uh, but also something that really impressed me. And I think everybody was like really uh, blown away by this. This game even has an intro. That is like, story in front of us like there's people protesting in front of the pipeline and then they start you know the police cops the militarized police are start, starting to shoot gas into the crowds and then one person runs in front and jumps into the ship and that's what you are in this game it's great it's you know how to blow up a pipeline the video game <laughs> I love it. Good stuff. And congratulations to Eric for releasing an incredible game. And yeah, for you guys out there, you definitely should play this. Yes, yes, yes. So today it was shadows and some little drawing stuff. Next time around, we're gonna deal with a lot of like bullet tweaking and canceling and sealing and origins and so forth. 
See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.